women are underdiagnosed and undertreated for heart disease. Why is that? Part of it is because we have a fair number of risks that are never accounted for in the risk calculators. Hey guys, it's Dr. Lily Johnston. I am back from Vancouver and am ready to share with you this talk on menopausal hormone therapy and cardiovascular risk. The talk was titled, Should We Be Afraid of Menopausal Hormone Therapy? And the short answer is no, and we'll talk about why. But I went with Vancouver to Vancouver with my mom and we talked about this to a large audience of OBGYNs because for a generation or more, women have been afraid of menopausal hormone therapy. So we are going to talk about the three big myths from a cardiovascular standpoint that have kept women from this life-changing treatment. Myth number one, menopausal hormone therapy causes blood clots. Myth number two, menopausal hormone therapy causes heart attack and stroke. And last but not least, myth number three, menopausal hormone therapy is irrelevant for cardiovascular risk. So we are going to go through all of those myths, what is true, what is false, and what this means for you if you are a woman or you love one who might be going through the menopausal transition sometime now or in the near future. So let's get into it. The first big myth that we need to talk about is menopausal hormone therapy causes blood clots. And it is true that in the Women's Health Initiative, there was indeed a higher risk of deep vein thrombosis or DVT and pulmonary embolism or PE, which is when those blood clots from the leg go to the lung and cause trouble. But what you need to understand is that a lot of that is due to the type of hormone that was used. Since the Women's Health Initiative, we have studied extensively the different types of hormones and the Provera, the progestin that was used in Women's Health Initiative is prothrombotic. So that particular type of hormone does cause blood clots, but the micronized progesterone, the bioidentical or isomolecular progesterone that we are now using as kind of the foundational progestin or progesterone for women, does not cause blood clots. We have studied it in randomized controlled trials and the risk is very, very low. The other piece is the estrogen and estrogens are known to cause blood clots when used orally, for example, birth control pills. But the estradiol that we now use most frequently in menopausal hormone therapy is absolutely safe in average risk women when it's given through the skin or transdermally. So that can be done as a cream, as a patch, as a ring, but even orally. Now, this is where some people will differ. There are people that should, that would say we should never prescribe oral estradiol or any oral estrogen for people because of the risk of blood clots but the data don't actually completely support that. We have a couple of really good randomized controlled trials with oral estradiol that in average to low risk patients does not show an increase in risk. Now you could say, well, why would you ever give oral if it's even less risky to give transdermal? This is about choice. This is about giving women the option to use the delivery system that works best for them. Some women don't like the patch. It irritates their skin or they exercise so much that it falls off. Whatever the case may be, there are some women who would prefer the oral estradiol. Guess what? If they do not have elevated risk for venous thromboembolism or blood clots, what are those risks? Well, history of a blood clot, family history of blood clotting problems, migraine with aura, cancer, active smoking, all of those things I would consider higher risk. And I would not offer that patient oral estradiol. But for somebody who has never had a blood clot, does not smoke, has no migraines, has really been healthy and fit her whole life, oral estradiol is one of several reasonable options. So let's not confuse the blood clots that absolutely did happen in the Women's Health Initiative with what can be done today safely with modern hormone formulations, because not all menopausal hormone therapy causes blood clots, just some. And understanding what your options are, what your risk is, is really important. So that's myth number one. Menopausal hormone therapy does not uniformly cause blood clots. The truth 
is that not all menopausal hormone therapy formulations have equivalent risk. The truth is that not all patients have equivalent thrombotic risk or risk for clotting. But transdermal estradiol, meaning through the skin, and micronized progesterone is by far the lowest risk option. And in patients who are on that regimen, rates of blood clots are near or equivalent to the population average. So the myth that it always causes blood clots just isn't true. The second big myth is that menopausal hormone therapy causes heart attack and stroke. This is what was reported at the big press conference that halted the Women's Health Initiative and basically by default all menopausal hormone therapy in the country for decades because they reported an increased risk of heart attack and stroke as well as breast cancer in the treatment arm of Women's Health Initiative. But if we now look 13 years later, or they looked 13 years after and saw that in fact, the risk of heart attack wasn't real. Once they better adjudicated the outcomes, the heart attack thing kind of went away. The risk of stroke did persist in Women's Health Initiative, but as we just talked about, stroke is a clotting problem and the agents that were used in Women's Health Initiative are a little bit prothrombotic or more likely to result in a clot. So it's not a huge surprise that there was an increased risk of stroke in Women's Health Initiative, but ultimately they did not find every increased risk of heart attack. And if we look at the time since WHI, if we look at stroke, no other randomized controlled clinical trial has found an increased risk of stroke in women taking menopausal hormone therapy. This includes the Danish osteoporosis prevention study or the DOPS trial, which was a thousand women randomized to oral estradiol, micronized progesterone or placebo. And they followed them for 16 years. They stopped the study at 10, but they had 16 years of follow-up. No increased risk in heart attack, no increased risk of stroke and no increased risk of blood clots. So I don't think it's safe to say that all menopausal hormone therapy causes heart attack and stroke. If we go back to the Women's Health Initiative data, we see that those women who did have cardiac events on Premarin and Provera did so in the first year that they were treated. And we think this has to do with something called MMP9 or matrix metalloproteinase 9 that is... Um, you know, brought on by the Premarin, the estradiol, or excuse me, the estrogens that were used in the Women's Health Initiative. We do not see activation of MMP9 with estradiol. And ultimately, the women who made it past that first year without an event began to have a decreased risk of cardiac events over time relative to that placebo group. The other thing, if you break out the Women's Health Initiative data, the women who started, who were younger, right, who had this intervention somewhere in their 50s, age 50 to 59, or who were less than 10 years into menopause, had zero increased risk of heart attack and stroke when this treatment was started early. So it's really not fair to say that menopausal hormone therapy writ large causes heart attack and stroke. It just doesn't. And our new, more modern formulations do not appear to have this risk. The last myth we need to talk about is that menopausal hormone therapy is irrelevant to cardiovascular health. Now, it is absolutely true that our current guidelines state that menopausal hormone therapy should not be prescribed for the sole purpose of preventing cardiovascular disease. That is true. However, that does not mean that it is irrelevant to cardiovascular disease risk. As I alluded to in the second myth, in fact, when we treat women who are within 10 years of the menopausal transition or who are under 60 years old, we see a pretty profound decrease in cardiovascular risk. And we can see this in multiple different ways. So, if you looked at our last video where we talked about cardiovascular imaging, I talked about the CIMT test or carotid intima media thickness. This was a technique used by investigators to image the arteries of women who were in menopause and some had treatment with hormone therapy and others didn't. The progression of thickening was 
read, you know, average in the women who were not treated and it slowed way down, meaning the arteries did not age as rapidly in those women who were on menopausal hormone therapy. And we can see this also in the population data, whether you want to look at the Danish osteoporosis prevention study, the DOPS trial, the Cochrane meta-analysis in women who are under 50, excuse me, under 60 or less than 10 years into menopause, or all of the observational studies, what we see is about a 40 to 50% reduction in cardiovascular event risk. And that is true across each of these different types of studies or types of analyses. And when you look at the Kaplan-Meier curves or the survival curves from the Danish osteoporosis prevention trial, we even see all-cause mortality improvement. So the myth that menopausal hormone therapy isn't relevant to cardiovascular disease just because we cannot recommend it solely for the purpose of prevention isn't true, right? Now, I mean, don't prescribe it for prevention only, but if women come with symptoms, if women come with a concern for bone density, estrogen, by the way, is FDA approved for the prevention of osteoporosis. So if you have concerns about bone density, menopausal hormone therapy might be one of several great options for you. If you have hot flashes, if you have night sweats, by the way, hot flashes and night sweats, vasomotor symptoms, predict increased cardiovascular risk. So if you're symptomatic, let's treat you and perhaps get some benefit in the long run, incidentally, because we have managed your hormones. So I think it's really fair to say that we should not prescribe menopausal hormone therapy just to prevent cardiovascular disease, but I also think that women going through menopause have lots of symptoms, lots of concerns. Bone fracture later in life is a huge concern. And I feel confident that if we are treating women within 10 years of menopause, we will be able to reduce cardiovascular event risk. So some of you are thinking that it's pretty out of left field for a vascular surgeon to be talking about menopausal hormone therapy at all. Like, why would that be? And five years ago, I absolutely would have agreed with you. It had nothing to do, I thought, with my career. But as I have transitioned into this preventative space, I have really come to understand how important hormone health is for all of us, but especially for my female patients. Now, part of this is because women are underdiagnosed and undertreated for heart disease. Why is that? Part of it is because we have a fair number of risks that are never accounted for in the risk calculators. So if you were here for our last video about cardiovascular imaging and risk, you will remember that there was this risk calculator that talks about age and your lipids and your blood pressure, but there are a large number of different risk factors, especially for women, that are nowhere in those calculators. What would some of those be? polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS, endometriosis, pregnancy adverse events like gestational hypertension, um, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, all of these increased risk for heart attack and stroke. Premature or early menopause absolutely increases risk for heart attack and stroke. And we know in those patients, menopausal hormone therapy absolutely brings that risk back to baseline. Things like autoimmune disease, which predominantly impact women, increases risk for cardiovascular disease. So all of these things impact my female patients, but are nowhere to be seen in their quote unquote risk calculations. So this is a big deal for women and we need to talk about it. So part of understanding why we've been afraid of hormone therapy for a generation or more is figuring out how we got here. Because in the 1980s, there were a large number of observational studies that showed women who were on menopausal hormone therapy, which is estrogen and progesterone, were in fact at lower risk for heart attack and stroke. And so everybody thought, well, great, this is amazing. We need a randomized controlled clinical trial to understand how menopausal hormone therapy could impact this risk. And perhaps all women should take hormone therapy to prevent heart attack and stroke. Enter the Women's Health Initiative, the WHI. This was a large randomized controlled trial that was designed to test the idea 
that every woman should be on menopausal hormone therapy to prevent cardiovascular disease. That was the question. But to answer that, methodologists designed the trial so that you could randomize women and they wouldn't know which arm they were in, meaning they were blinded. How do you randomize somebody who's having hot flashes and drenching night sweats and tell them, oh, we don't know which one you're getting. Well, if they're getting hormones, they feel better. If they're getting placebo, they still have hot flashes and drenching night sweats. So the Women's Health Initiative said, great, we'll just take asymptomatic women. Perfect, no problem, now we can blind them. But that really eliminates a large swath of the population, right? And the other thing they did was they wanted to make sure there would be enough heart disease in the participants that they could really show a difference. So they took a cohort of older women, Women on average were 63 years old in this trial and about 10 years or more passed to the menopausal transition. So good news, they had higher risk of heart attack and stroke and we could measure it. But bad news, that again is not really representative of when we typically treat patients who have symptoms in menopause. So it was an older cohort of women who had already gone through menopause almost 10 years from a half or more and they were not symptomatic. So really we need to remember how this trial was designed and why it doesn't really show what we think it shows. The next thing that's important to remember about the Women's Health Initiative is this was done before we had access to so-called bioidentical isomolecular or the body's most natural form of the hormones. So Women's Health Initiative used Premarin and Provera as the hormone. So Premarin was the estrogen they used, and that comes from pregnant mare's urine, Premarin, and was about 17 different kinds of estrogens, some of which we have as humans and some of which we don't. It was very effective at treating hot flashes and night sweats, but it's not exactly what our own ovaries are making. The Provera was the progestin that they used, and it was a synthetic called medroxyprogesterone acetate because at that time it was very difficult for us to orally absorb progesterone, the natural version that we ourselves make. Pharmacology has come a long way since then and now we are able to micronize that progesterone and we are able to use what we naturally make ourselves. So people call this bioidentical, isomolecular is probably a better term, but nevertheless, what we are using today for hormone therapy is really different than what we were using in the 1990s. We did the best we knew how at that time, but things have changed. So we have covered the three big myths about menopausal hormone therapy and cardiovascular risk. That it causes blood clots, not necessarily true. That it causes heart attack and stroke, definitely not true. And that it's irrelevant for cardiovascular health. This is not true. So in conclusion, we know that women are underdiagnosed and undertreated for cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death for women more than all cancers combined. And menopausal hormone therapy can absolutely be part of safe treatment for women through the menopausal transition. Our contemporary formulations, meaning oral estradiol, transdermal estradiol, micronized progesterone, these types of isomolecular or bioidentical hormones are safer than those that we studied when we were doing the Women's Health Initiative. They are safe with respect to blood clots, to heart attack and stroke, and do seem to show some improvement in cardiovascular risk when women are treated within 10 years of the menopausal transition. So when we use this early to alleviate symptoms, to help women feel better and navigate this transition, we, I believe, do great things for their vascular health. And that, to me, is my mission. You know I'm here to put myself out of business as a surgeon, and I think this is one of many tools that are in my tool basket that help my patients feel better and will help them live a longer and healthier life. If you have questions about any of this, please drop that in the comments below. We will try to get to that. If there are a lot of questions, we can make a follow-up video. So let me know what you need to hear more about with respect to menopause, hormone therapy, and cardiovascular risk. Leave it in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, or share this video for someone that needs to hear it, and we will talk again soon. Until then, take really good care.